how many times do you have this question that am I too late in preparing for study abroad? What is the right time to start? When should I start? Mostly this video will be focusing on planning, having that roadmap to prepare for study abroad for mostly masters. And welcome to this channel. I am Sambit PhD. Uh, as you know from the channel, Sambit Praraj. I have been living in Netherlands for more than six years and I make videos on studying and living in Netherlands, Europe, Germany and other places. So this video will specifically give you a roadmap. If you are a bachelor student, how can you prepare for masters? What is the right timeline to start? So let's focus on it in different parts. So I will also give you a rough timeline with all the events so that you can have a rough idea of the timestamps that you need to follow to reach your goal. So let's talk about the first step. First step is use Google. You can ask your university seniors, contact someone if you already know, uh, like just your first point of contact, informal contact. And I would say you should start this end of first year or at the beginning of second year of bachelors. So then you get an idea about different type of universities, requirements, what are the challenges they had. Uh, then going to the second point is profile building in terms of internships, research visits, projects, CGPA and other points that you need to keep in mind. Because remember that if you apply immediately before the end of your bachelor's without any experience then the best thing will be to maintain a good cgpa till your sixth semester or till the third year so for that to happen you need to plan the cgpa ideally you should have a greater than equal to 7.5 or greater than equal to 8 to be on the safe side and also uh, from the second year only from the beginning of second year you should start looking for different kind of collaboration, networking and research internships or maybe industrial internships. So that can add to your CV when you are applying for masters and ideally you do them in third year. So that's why it's better to start planning from second year of bachelors. Now the third point is shortlisting the universities. So you need to find out different requirements, specific countries have varied requirements, varied qualifications. Sometimes you need to also give nowadays after COVID and everything, they are going away from GRE, TOEFL and all these qualification exams. But still, if you need any kind of qualification exam, mostly GRE, TOEFL or IELTS, then you need to also look into that and you need some time to prepare that. So I would say if you need those kind of preparation, uh, you should start in the second half of your second year of bachelor's uh, so that you know like what is the cutoff and how much time you need to prepare for the exams, maybe a month, maybe six months. Now, for all these things, so I would say like, thank you, Yoket, for sponsoring this video. Uh, you can also find a lot about what to prepare for and what all you should keep in mind while planning to study abroad on Yoket.com. So Yoket.com is like a, one of the most unique kind of application-based service that I have ever come across, where you can find to compare the universities and all these things. Like literally, you can find everything you might need under one hood. So that makes it so cool that you have all these amazing free tools that Yoket gives on their application as well as on their website, which you might be seeing on the screen. For example, you can find these amazing blogs about various test preparations. And not only this, by using Yoket's grad school finder, you can easily know which university fits your profile in the best way and once you get that information then you can check out their university comparer tool and shortlist the best universities that you should choose to go for. So that is not where it ends. They also have a premium version from Yoket which will give you a dedicated counselor who will suggest you everything to improve your profile and provide you tips for a better SOP. Uh, also help you with the university applications and they will stay with you together until you finally fly off to your dream university. So I would say you must check out yoket.com and you can find all this information in the links that is in the description below. So going to, moving on to the fourth point is like deciding about the recommendation letter. So I won't make this video long by talking a lot about recommendation letter, but it kind of can make or break your application uh, to study abroad. So I would say 
check the video that will be flashing on the screen i have made a detailed video on how you write a recommendation letter how can you apply for scholarship and ideally i would say you should dedicate your third year of your bachelor's uh, maybe the end of third year normally uh, you apply in the end of third year if you are planning to immediately study masters after bachelor's so your third year of your bachelor's you need to give some months in the beginning to write a generic motivation letter and then you can kind of tailor make make it specific for different universities that you're applying for using that generic letter after multiple drafts so do check that video to get an idea moving on to the fifth point you need to categorize the universities like whether you are choosing it as a safe university moderate or ambitious ideally these are the three categories so if you have these three categories what happens is that it's not that you apply to 10 universities and you get a zero admit so if you have that safe classification then they are sure that okay these two universities based on the profile what i have and what they need uh, is a safe university so maybe i can get an admit but uh, the others i'm not sure so then you have kind of a diversification so it's very important to have a three tier classification and you do that based on different criteria. Uh, you can check the university shortlisting video like how to shortlist universities there i mentioned all the details about this and other criteria that you use to shortlist universities i would say you should dedicate first half of your third year of bachelor's for these kind of activities now moving to the sixth point you need to uh, apart from preparing motivation letter you also need good recommendation letters so different universities have different criteria for that you need to be ready like who is going to write your recommendation letter from whom you will bring ideally they ask for two recommendation letters sometimes they also ask for three so what people do is like if they have some university contact they bring one from the university most of it is two but sometimes they ask for three so ideally you should have a mix like one from university one from industry or two from university or in some cases two from university one from industry so that depends but always be ready like uh, sometimes people are willing to give you but they are so busy that they don't want to uh, they don't have time to read emails or give you a recommendation so in that case i would say like prepare with them beforehand maybe in the mid of third year of bachelors like i will need a recommendation after so many months so please help me with that now moving to the seventh point uh, you need to apply for the universities and you also need to check scholarships normally the scholarship deadlines are much before than the real application deadline so always keep that in mind like one year or maybe more than one year before you are joining the university you need to apply for all these scholarships look for the uh, different information about the scholarships talk with the alumni or seniors now moving to the next point the eighth point also have some backups i would say because it it may be i have heard from some of my friends also experience that you may not get an admit immediately after finishing your bachelors so then it's better like if you go with work experience maybe after one or two years have a backup job or something or campus placements as we have in india and another thing i would say like there are also options you can talk with your seniors like to defer your admit during the covid it happened a lot and also it was there before so ideally they allow like one or two year defer uh, it varies from university to university if you get admit and if you have some change in personal circumstance because of finance or some other issue you can always defer it and go in the one year next so instead of sitting at home uh, i would say never be overconfident that i will definitely get admit even if you have some safe universities have a backup job uh, finally going to the last two points so the ninth point is making a rough timeline as i mentioned in different points like what is the specific rough range of timeline that fits for these events uh, try to plot them on a if you want to plan it before two years like if you're planning for the whole bachelors before in the second year of bachelors then i would say plan these things make a calendar or something like that make it as specific as possible so that it will give you a concrete idea you don't need to show it to someone else but just for your head and uh, follow that timeline so that you can make an informed decision by the way the last point is actually a blog probably you will see a blog of this whenever i get time maybe you will be already seeing it when the video is out in the description below the link is in the description or maybe within a week it will be there thank you for watching the video uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe uh, help out each other till next video goodbye from netherlands see you peace